Hey everyone, welcome back to today's video. Today I wanna to talk to everyone about probably the most important dry fire practice drill. There's a lot of videos right now coming out on dry fire practice because of the ammo shortages, but this is something that has been around for quite a long time. You should definitely be practicing dry fire every day if possible. Um, in today's video, it is going to be on pulling the trigger straight to the rear. Now why that's important is, and it's clear by the way, now why that's important is if you don't pull the trigger straight to the rear and you drive the gun off by just say two degrees, depending on the distance of your target, that could be inches or it could be the difference of missing by a foot or more. Again, it just depends on, on the distance of your target and by how much you're pulling the trigger or squeezing the trigger and driving it offline. So real quick note, I didn't come up with this. This is something that was taught to me in a class that I took maybe two or three years ago. So I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I don't take credit for any of this. It's just something that was taught to me and I'm passing it along to you guys. All right, so you're going to take your gun. You're gonna make sure that it's clear. I checked it, there's no magazine. You're going to bring the gun up and you're gonna need either dummy rounds or you're gonna need casings. I don't recommend that you do this with live ammo. Uh, so dummy rounds or some casings and have a couple of them. Hopefully you also have a roommate, a husband, wife, someone who's patient and will help you with this because what you're going to do is you're going to take the casing or the dummy round and you're going to put it, you're going to balance it on the front sight. So you're going to bring the gun up and once it's nice and level, your partner is going to place it on the front sight, balancing it, and you're going to pull the trigger straight to the rear without it falling off. So that was a successful trigger pull. Because I have a double single action trigger, I also have to practice that single or that double action trigger. So I'm balancing this, slowly pulling the trigger to the rear, and it didn't fall off. So those are two positive and successful uh, trigger pulls that I have. If it falls, then you have to try it again and try it again and again and again. The purpose is pulling that trigger straight to the rear and not having that casing fall off. If it does fall off, you did not pull the trigger straight to the rear. So again, why this is important, depending on the, the distance to the target, if you drive your gun off, if you squeeze the trigger and you drive that gun off by say even just two degrees, you're going to miss by quite a lot. I've taken a lot of friends with me to the range. And I'll tell them for example, to hit say this bottom button, if you guys can see it. And the distance is maybe say five yards. And they'll hit all the way over here. And I tell them that they missed. And they're like, well, whatever. It's still a combat effective hit. You know, I still hit his lung, for example. It's like, yes, okay, you have a full sight picture at that moment. You're not nervous. Your heart rate isn't at its maximum predicted heart rate. Your adrenaline level is pretty low. It's not at its all time high you have no fear of potentially getting shot yourself. So if you miss and you can't hit this and you hit all the way over here or even further or higher up or higher up or lower, under stress, you're gonna miss by that much more. Also, if say you have a wall right here and this is all concrete and you know that the bad guy has a gun and he can potentially shoot at you, are you going to Say this is the wall. Are you going to just peek around the wall enough so that you break your shot off and exposing the most minimal part of your body? Or are you going to completely step out and be like, hi, bad guy, here's my entire body. Now let me shoot you and I'm giving you all of this to potentially shoot. You're probably only going to come around the corner just a little bit as far as you can or as far as you need to in order to break your shot off. Bad guys are probably gonna do the same thing. They also might just stick their gun out and start shooting. And as they're shooting, then they come out and then they start aiming. So if something like that happens, your target and what you're trying to hit is significantly smaller and it's going to be their hand and or their forearm and their shoulders. So that's why it's so important for you to pull the trigger straight to the rear. This also prevents you from driving the gun forward, whether it's because you think that the gunshots are really loud or it's just you think that driving the gun forward 
is helping you mitigate that recoil. Doing the drill that I showed you earlier of just pulling the trigger, balancing the casing on the front is going to prevent you from doing this and from driving the gun offline. Okay, so again, these are, are drills that you can do at home. You should be practicing this every single day. If you can, try having 30 successful trigger pulls where the casing doesn't fall off of the front sight. Now, when I was showed this, I lived alone and I didn't have someone to balance it out and trying to balance this out on my own and bringing my sight all the way up, it can get pretty hard. And the idea of like, okay, well, you should be able to balance it out and then bring the gun up nice and slow without it falling, that's wasting time. So one of the things that I did is I took a casing from the range and I grabbed uh, some string, some super glue. I super glued the string to the casing and then I tied this and made it hang from my curtain, from my shower curtain rod. And so then it would just hang about here and I could just go to my shower and I could bring my gun up and because it was already hanging, it was a lot easier for me to put that front sight or that casing on the front sight, balance it out and then I can just pull the trigger. And also the benefit is, is if it falls or when I need to take it off, I don't need to worry about it dropping to the ground and me spending time bending over, picking it up, or just digging it in, in my pocket for more shell casings. It was just hanging right there. It was hanging just a little bit lower than what it needed to be so that I could bring my gun up, balance it, take the slack out, and then break the shot off. And I just kept doing this over and over and over and over again. Hopefully that tip is useful for you guys. I highly recommend that you do this every day or multiple times a week regardless of whether you just started shooting or you've been shooting for the last 10 years. I know that for me, I started shooting when I was six years old, I'm 35. I didn't really start taking training and start shooting seriously until I was 21. And from six years old until 21, I developed really bad habits. My dad never told me, you know, pull the trigger straight to the rear, don't drive the gun forward. I thought that by pushing forward, I was helping mitigate that recoil. If you see some videos of super slow-mo shooting happening, you'll see that the bullet exits the barrel well before the slide starts reciprocating and going back and you feel that recoil. So try fighting that. This is going to help. It's helped me. It's helped so many other people that I've taught it to. And again, I didn't come up with this. This is something that was showed to me a couple years ago in a, one of the classes that I took. All right guys, I hope that you found that useful. Please consider subscribing, giving it a thumbs up. And if you do start doing this and you do notice a difference, please comment below, let me know. I'd love to hear your guys' comments on what you think about this. Take care, see you guys next time.